Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial about how breadboards work, solderless breadboards. Alrighty, so this is the standard breadboard. Um, just a little bit of history, uh, some folks are confused about why these things are called breadboards and it's actually a remnant from when electronics was first getting started. Um, before there were really small components, what people would do is actually grab a breadboard out of the kitchen, which is basically just a board, a wooden board, and then in order to build a circuit or an electronic device, they would basically run wires along the breadboard and stick in nails to run out the circuit and the lines for the circuit. So that nomenclature has continued on here with our more advanced breadboards or, well, not our more advanced, our, our smaller breadboards. So that's where the name comes from. A breadboard itself um, has three primary components most of the time. Uh, one is the power rails, and the power rails are actually these, um, these bars along the side, these two columns right here and over here sometimes they're denoted with a plus or a minus um, most of the time they are but what these are is underneath all of these holes in this column in this column in this column and in this column is basically a long strip of metal running the full length of the board underneath each one of these sets of holes and that allows you to run power all the way along the breadboard. So if you plug in, say, the positive terminal right here from some power source like a battery pack or a power supply, plug it in right here, that power, that five, let's say five volt power, will be available in any one of these holes all the way along this column. And then if you plug in ground into, say, this hole right here, then that negative power, the ground, will be available in all of these holes along this. So even though these are separated in kind of groups of five along the side of the board, this entire column, this entire row right here, and this entire row right here are separate, but each set of five is connected. So here is basically one long wire that has a bunch of inputs to it, and here is basically one long wire with a bunch of inputs to it, another long wire with a bunch of inputs to it, another long wire with a bunch of inputs to it. That's the easiest way we have to say this. If you plug it into any of these holes along this row, they all connect to each other, and so on for this spot, this spot, and this spot. All right, the next part of the breadboard are all these uh, center rows, which are called uh, terminal strips. And they are exactly the same, they're set up the same, in that each row now is a single connection, a single wire, basically. So that if you plug something into this hole, it's, that connection is going to be available in each one of these other holes in the row. So this whole row is basically one single wire, and then so on for this one, this one, this one. The last um, terminology basically for the breadboard is this groove, this trench in the middle here, which is actually called a DIP support. And the DIP support, um, is or DIP, is uh, just available so that you can put integrated circuits across this board and have them completely separated from one side or the other. So if you have some small IC, then you just plug it into the middle here and it fits perfectly. This is a standard width for almost all ICs. Okay, the point of a solderless breadboard it, board is to prototype circuits very quickly and very easily without having to use solder. Solder takes a lot of time and it's basically irreversible. Once you build it, you can't really go back very easily. So a breadboard is a great way to experiment with circuits as you're moving along and you basically plug in components and see what it does. So here we have a very, very simple circuit down here. And you can kind of see how it works. We have this LED. It has two leads, the negative and the positive. We plug it into one of these. So now each one of these terminal strips is now the negative up here and the positive down here. We have that jumping. We have what are called jumper wires. These are jumper wires which are just small wires with plugs in them so that we can plug into those terminal strips. We have the positive coming over here to the positive power rail, which is right here in this case. And then we've got the negative jumper cable going over to the negative power rail, which are all of these holes over here like we talked about in the beginning. Down here at the bottom, you can see I have positive going into this power rail which then powers all of these holes, all of these inserts, all these plugs, full length of the board. And then this negative ground powers all of these holes, full length of the board. So now if I run power into this, 
which I have small three volt, turns on the LED and you can see power is just going straight through here. It's just a very simple circuit of just power going to some load, which in this case is the LED. Power comes up through here, here goes through the jumper wire, straight through this terminal strip to the LED, coming back out to ground, grounds the whole terminal strip through the jumper wire and back to the main ground power rail on the side. So that's how uh, the breadboard works. It's a very simple device. Some people get confused by either the rows or the columns. There's really not much to it. You just have to remember that in the center, the rows are all basically a single connection. And on the side, the entire side, each column is a single connection. So you've got one wire right here, one wire, wire right here, and then one wire basically across each one of these rows. That's how a breadboard works.